This is the first episode of Artist and Soul and for Joy TV Network. And I'm really excited to be with Robert Gann. And Robert, thank you so much for being here with me. Absolutely, Joy. It's, uh, it's great to see you. And um, thank you for inviting me. And yeah, I look forward to our, <laughs> our discussion. So I'm a very big fan of yours, and I appreciate having something different and so textural. Later, you'll see lots of Robert's unique, incredible artwork. For now, I want to give you just a peek so you'll understand when I say I want to touch it. Look at all the texture and layers. I think art is really important for people, and I think that your art could really just really live well in a lot of places and especially in um I would think it would be really great in hotels because it's uh -huh. so large and it's something different about what you see every day so yeah, that's why yeah. I really like it and it gives you a feeling like oh this is fascinating and like I said I just want to want to feel it but if it feels like oil paints then I know what that feels like but it looks kind of like fabric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I thought, is this woven when I first looked at it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, that's funny you mentioned that. I, um, uh, I've i done a few pieces where I take uh, the the canvas and I, I have a frame and then I weave the canvas, the initial canvas is woven onto the frame and leaving uh, little slits where, you know, you can actually see through. And then I'll weave more um, and tie, kind of like the old macrame days, you know, when they made things out of macrame. But it's not, it's not um, quite like that. But I'll, I'll weave and tie more fabric on there and paint it. And then I backlight it with LED lights, and uh, and the light comes through, uh, and it's really fascinating. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. And I've uh, yeah I've, I've I, I actually about a year ago I commissioned a, a piece. Uh, for that, for, for someone who lives here on Maui, and uh, turned out really nice, and and uh, and I have several of those paintings uh, at a um, at a restaurant out here on Maui, and they use it to decorate their restaurant, and uh, it's really effective with that LED lighting. Yeah, that's really clever. But is what kind of paint do you use? Well, primarily I work with acrylic. Um, sometimes I include oil. Uh, or pastels, but uh, the majority of my work lately has been uh, with acrylic. You know, the, the, the layering that I do, um, it's really by accident that I, I happened onto this process. I was, I was experimenting with some, some texture that I created using different media and I, um, I was thinking about how I could use that texture. And one day I was just playing around in my studio and uh, I just dripped a few lines of paint on a board. And then I put down a layer of texture on top of the paint with just areas where the, the layer below, there was just spots where the layer below would peek through. And then I put another layer of paint down, uh, dripping it again, and then more texture. And I did that process about four or five times, and I couldn't really see what was going on underneath. So I, I was just, it was just an experiment. So after about four or five of these layers, I decided, okay, I want to see what this looks like. And so I shook out and removed all of the texture. And what I saw were layers of paint that were um, actually separate from each other. You know, most of the time when you put on a layer of paint, <clears throat> the, the one layer is just right immediately on top of the next. <clears throat> Excuse me, but these layers actually had dimension to them. They, they, were, they were separate. And they were held together at those points where the, the layer below was attached to the layer above. So it ended up with a 3D um, a reveal. And it just really struck me at that point that, that I had never ever imagined that I could do that with paint. And, um, and then it immediately flashed for me that, you know, 
uh, when they create like a sand cast mold, they will create the uh, cast, pour the molten metal into the cast, and then they remove all the sand and it leaves behind whatever you were casting. Well, it's very similar with the paint, putting down the layers with the media in between and then removing all the media. And what you're left with are these three-dimensional layers of paint. <clears throat> so it was very unique. And so I've been developing that now for uh, several years. And I've, I've coined the phrase floating layers uh, for the technique. So anyway, that's a little background on how all that came about. <laughs> <laughs> that's just totally awesome and you've only been doing this a couple of years well i started really painting uh in the fall of 2017 um i was able to um organize my life to where i uh i was able to focus primarily on painting at that time and um so yeah basically uh this will be i'm into the really basically the fourth year now of being a full-time artist and i've dabbled with art throughout my life but this was a decision to really to really um have it be my primary focus do you get any inspiration from where you live yeah we do you know it's such a beautiful place <clears throat> we have um you know probably the best weather of anywhere in the world um and we have incredible a range of um you know of climate here I, you know some years ago i i was i was at a um at a starbucks here on maui and i ran into a um a, a geologist who's also a he's into a climate change and he was explaining to me that he was here on maui examining all of the different types of climate climate zones and he said really the only the only thing that we don't have on Maui are the extreme desert like you would experience maybe in uh, northern Africa and Arctic tundra. Those are the, those are the only two geological or, or climate type zones that we don't have here. So you can try you can drive for five minutes and be in a different climate zone with different different types of vegetation. And so it really is there's incredible variety here. You know, not to mention um, you know the the water and uh, the volcanoes and all of that too. So, and there's a, a huge culture here. I mean, we have people from everywhere that are living here and they bring their culture with them. And so uh, a lot of influences that way, yeah. Well, tell me how you got into New York art galleries. <clears throat> okay, well, um, I quite, a, quite often will connect with folks um, through LinkedIn, which is a social, media platform primarily for business mm -hmm. and uh, so i was just uh messaging different people to connect with them and um there was a fellow that i saw that uh, uh, was from new york city and he was involved in the art world and i messaged him and he contacted me he actually uh, messaged me back and said he wanted to uh talk because he had gone to followed some links to my website and saw my work. So uh, he called me and we talked and uh, uh, it was actually a real surprise to me. He, uh, he had been in New York in the art scene for decades. Uh, he used to hang out with the likes of Warhol and Bastiat and all these people. And, and he was right there in the middle of that scene. And he was also an art dealer and a gallery owner. So anyway, for whatever reason, I'm not absolutely sure he took a liking to my work. And um, so it grew from there. And then uh, it was about a little over a year ago that he asked me if I would like to be represented with his gallery back in New York. So, so that's where it's at at this point. And uh, so, yeah, actually I'll be talking to one of the, um, one of the folks that are, um, involved in building their gallery online website. I'll be talking with them tomorrow about you know, how we're proceeding. So anyway, it's been a really nice connection to have that. And uh, hopefully one of these days I can go back to New York for a show. And uh, I've never been to New York. Uh, oh. I, I was raised in the Western United States in Denver and Colorado. And 
I've been around the West, you know, but I've, I've never been back East further than the Mississippi River. So I'll be uh, a newbie <laughs> to the East Coast, yeah. Well, that would be quite exciting. If you're gonna have a show there, let me know and I'll meet you there. I've been yeah. in New York, it's interesting, but I would never want to live there. Um, I used to think I would only live in the country because I lived in wine country, but I recently moved back to the city after being gone for my, most of my adult life. Well, all of my adult life have been gone from oh, wow. County, California. And I have to say, I really like being in the city. I never thought I would, but New York is just too many tall skyscrapers and not enough sky. <laughs> <laughs> I but know. It's fun to go and, and, and see the art and the plays and everything. I think you would enjoy it a lot. And yeah. it's amazing when you're selling such beautiful artwork there that you've never been there to see it hanging there. I think that would be really something for you as an artist. Yeah, I would, I would love that. I would love to ship some, some work back there and actually go back there for an event. So, so we'll see, uh, you know, um, hopefully things will settle down with the uh, pandemic and, and maybe we can do that uh, maybe this year. Who knows? I hope so. When I yeah. was, um, a child living in the same city I live in now. My mother was an artist and she sold her works in Laguna Beach and in Long Los Angeles. And she sold uh -huh. a lot of paintings. My, um, she's actually in a book called The Art and Soul of Jane St. John. And so uh -huh. that's where I came up with the art and soul. But she called herself a spiritual artist. And she said everything came to her from divine revelation or whatever. And she painted beautiful sceneries. Do you ever feel like when you're doing your work that is inspired by more than just what you're going to do? I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, there there are things. You know, um, spirituality is a very important part of my life. Um, you know, just especially the the real basic things. You know, um, uh, you know, the golden rule: uh, to do it for others as you would have them do unto you, and and just really. Um, you know, a basic, ba applying basic principles to life, you know, to, uh, you know, to seek peaceful relationships with people and kindness and generosity and patience, you know, what a virtue and, 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 you know, so those, those things influence my life. And I know that they influence my work, even though it's made, most of the time, it isn't really conscious, it isn't a conscious influence, but it's just more of a, of a, um, you know, it's just more of a of, of, of an extension of of how I feel about things, and uh, you know, and occasionally I'll <clears throat> I'll have a piece that uh, you know I have a piece that I recently did uh, when the Afghanistan withdrawal took place, and I was viewing this you know of course with everybody else on the media, but seeing the faces of all of these thousands of people desperate to get out of Afghanistan. And that influenced the painting, uh, and I, I titled that painting "Left Behind," and it was just a painting to try and just grasp the the emotion of the faces of, in those of all these people that were left behind. So sometimes something like that will influence a painting. But um, but to to answer your question, yes, spirituality influences my work, but usually it's not a a conscious planned. You know, uh, you know, I don't have a method method of trying to create a spiritual peace in that sense. So, yeah. yeah. I found that being creative is a really good healing um, modality. Or I'm not exactly what to call it, but I, I was playing with an idea of writing a book and calling it Depression to Joy Through Creativity. My creativity is in interior design and creating houses and also writing. And oh. so do you feel like when you're sad or depressed, if you can go just make some art, does it help you feel better? Uh, sometimes it's just a great distraction from feeling down, you know, or feeling distressed or feeling anxiety. Um, and, you know, and in that sense, it's, it's a relief. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily treat it like a personal therapy as much as a, um, just a way to release, um, you know, the, maybe a feeling of anxiety or, or maybe to release pressure from, you know, stressful day or something like that. But, but, um, but it's, it really all kind of, it all comes together, right? It, you can't really, 
<clears throat> disassociate your work as a writer or as a designer or or in your case you know with maybe a building architecture or writing you know writing a, a story those things you, you can't really separate them that much they're all they're all intertwined and and so yeah it's an interesting creativity is such an interesting topic really um and i i i when I, when I see someone's work, whether it's a painter or an architect or um, a dancer, a poet, uh, someone playing music, that, that, that really puts all of that together. You can see that their, their whole life is put together in a very balanced and, and focused way. It just comes out. You can just feel it. You can see it. You can hear it. And, um, and I, really, I really appreciate the the work that goes in to accomplishing that. Uh, yeah. Well, I have another question for you along those lines. When you wake up in the morning, are you ready to go to work? I'm not considered uh, work. <clears throat> well, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I have I have my little routine. You know, I'll, I'll fix I'll fix some breakfast. Um, I have a nice little uh, Italian cappuccino maker that. Uh, I'll heat up some coffee. And then I like to uh, start my day out with some spiritual thoughts. I'll usually read uh, a chapter in the Bible. And uh, I've been reading the book of Psalms lately. Oh. And uh, just prior to that, I was reading the book of Ecclesiastes, which is an incredible book written by King Solomon, of all people. He was a very wise man. And uh, if you remember a song by a band called The Birds, and that song was called Turn, Turn, Turn. Mm -hmm. Well, that song was taken from the third chapter of Ecclesiastes. Those lyrics, you know, a time to build, a time to tear down, yeah. a time, time to plant, a time to uproot, a time for peace, a time for war. All of those lyrics came from that chapter in Ecclesiastes. So a beautiful way to start the day. And then from there, I'll, I'll, I'll look at, you know, I'll just kind of glance at the headlines of the news, check email, and, um, and then I'll get my day started. So. I don't usually wake up with a drawing pad and a, and a, and a pen. I, I have a little routine just to get going. Well, then I would say, since you're reading your spirituality, that everything that you're doing is you're just going, flowing along with the, the flow of life and love. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. That, that, that's really, for me, that's what it's, what it's really about. And, and you know, the, the, Currently, our lives are, there are so many demands on us, and uh, a lot of people that I talk to say that they're 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 more crazy busy now during this pandemic than they've ever been. I know, and, and it's it's just the nature of of our world right now. It's gotten so complex and so demanding, and so I find that um, it's really difficult to balance all of that and to find the time to do the things that are that are really important to keep those things first. And then let everything else filter in when the time is there. Yeah. So how long does it take you to complete a big giant piece of art? And what do you well, call them? Uh, well, those paint they're, they're paintings, basically. Painting. Okay. Um, you know, it really depends upon um, a lot of factors. I'm currently working on a piece right now that um, I started several years ago. And I looked at it, let it hang on the wall. Uh, kept looking at it. And then recently I, I tore a lot of it apart and, uh, and now I'm reworking it. So um, that piece will probably end up taking four years. Whereas other pieces, I might, I might do it in a matter of two or three days. So it, it's, I don't know, it's hard to, hard to give you a time on that, but, but it really just comes down to um, when I feel like it's done enough. I don't think I've ever felt like one was completely finished, but I feel like I get to a point where it's done enough. Done enough. <laughs> and, uh, I wish reminds me, I did queue up a, um, a little video that I made yesterday, uh, just kind of a, a walkthrough of our- I would love our, to see that. You want to share that with us now? Yeah, sure. Let me, uh, let me pull that up for you. All right, welcome to our studio and gallery. Robert Gann with the art farm here. 
and uh, just a couple of pieces that I just recently put on the entrance to act as a welcome. There's a piece that I'm currently working on. This guy is 80 inches by 48 inches. And this one is going to be an emotional ride. I, I have a feeling about this one. That is one of my first pieces that I created. It's a door. I love that piece. And this is another one of the first pieces. I just recently hung up as a, uh, a flash of the past. It's carved on board and painted. And all kinds of interesting little characters in this piece. You can see them doing all sorts of interesting things. All right, so so this here is a, uh, a lighted piece. It's a uh, Sun Series piece, but it has these very nice, subtle lights that, uh, that come back behind each of the each of the sun strokes there. And then this piece here is another lighted piece. Yeah, this, the way this was created is, uh, well, uh, the initial canvas in the background was woven onto a frame. And then the rest of the piece was woven and tied and painted, of course, and then backlit with LEDs. It's kind of nice to be able to see the depth and see the layers. Yeah. Piece I've done on board. It it was really fun to create this, to create a, I guess it's a quadruptic, <laughs> kind of hard to say. We'll do a tour that's more in depth about why these pieces were created, what the feeling was behind them. Here's a recent piece. Yeah, here's another recent piece that I created, and uh, I like this one. It's got a free freeness to it. Oh, uh, and then this guy. I don't know if I can get back far enough to show the whole thing, but yeah. What I love about these is they they hang from the ceiling and it is painted on both sides. I don't have this one that far from the the wall just due to space, but yeah, they're both both sides on these pieces. Oh yeah, this piece. When the withdrawal took place in Afghanistan. And I saw all those thousands of faces on the people who were desperate to leave. That inspired this piece. Uh, it's called Left Behind. A fun piece to create. Uh, you can see the side view, the, the texture that's going on here. This one four, 
was actually inspired by the first time I was a kid. I think I was 12 years old. <laughs> My father took me golfing. And toward the end, I think it was close to the ninth hole, might have been the ninth hole, quite by accident, I hit a hole in one. So I titled this piece four. That's what we used to say, or at least what my father used to say when they were teeing off. And this piece here, Drawings from the Mind Cave, number one, the first of a series. Yeah, well, that's a tour, pretty much of the gallery. This is Robert <laughs> saying aloha and hope to see you. If you come to Maui, come visit. We'll give you a private studio tour and uh, maybe some fresh avocados or mangoes if you come at the right time. All right, uh, hui ho and aloha. So is there anything else that you want to share with us? Well, um, you know, I think the main thing for me is, you know, a lot of folks um, that I know that are artists, they really struggle with, um, with actually getting their art out there and getting it sold and getting, getting that all together. <clears throat> and fortunately for me, um, I've started other businesses in the past over the years. And I've over the years learned more about how to, you know, to market, how to, how to do those things you know, those basic tasks of getting your work out there. And so I would just, you know, I would just like to encourage other artists that, that, um, you know, really, you know, being an artist is, it requires being artistic, being creativity. And it's really, marketing is an art as well. It requires creativity. And uh, so if, if, as an artist, if you're, if you view it that way, it's, it's just another, another form of art, because I think a lot of artists view it as this horrid task of having to, oh, I have to go do this sales and marketing and everything, and it, and it seems awful. But if you view it as a creative art form, then it can be quite exciting, actually, because it's challenging. And if you do it right, it really is a form of art. So, so yeah, I would just like to encourage other artists out there to uh, maybe take another uh, way of looking at that whole issue of marketing and selling their work. So, yeah, and then, you know, the main thing I think really is to just uh, to really have a balanced life as an artist, to not, to not be too extreme in any area, but to balance everything as best you can, because I think that that creates a much healthier atmosphere for you to work. Uh, and I think it helps to avoid the incredible ups and downs in life too by staying more balanced and and uh so anyway that's that's my my take on it and uh you know i'm just another another person out there in the world but but i i certainly feel that um you know i'm i'm definitely um thankful and grateful for the opportunity to do this and for this interview too i it's great i appreciate your your invitation to do this so um, well, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. 